Um, we thought Bakhmut was bad, but uh, Avdika, as far as the commitment of, of uh, major heavily armored forces, especially by the uh, Russians, um, a determined Ukrainian defense, it is a traditional charnel house, but by the same token, again, the Ukrainians have given uh, certainly more than they've received. Yes. And everything we read about the Russians is they've suffered terrible losses. They've had to dip into their um, older armor reserves. The Italian Prime Minister Giorgio Maloney, who was caught there saying that world leaders were getting tired, fatigued, she said, of the Ukraine war. That was during a call with, well, they turned out to be Russian pranksters posing as African diplomats. Peter, that, but that sort of uh, message from the Italian leader, it's going to send a chill down spines in Kyiv, isn't it? Of course, Ukraine's worry, great fear, is a fracturing, fracturing and a weakening of support. Um, yeah, I think that, uh, that uh, John, that she, uh, yeah, she does, I think, state something accurate, that the war is fatiguing. People are tired of the war. However, that doesn't necessarily translate into a lack of resolve to uh, to uh, to stick uh, with it, to stay the course. Mm. Um, I can't imagine what it must have been like um, in, uh, in 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 England during World War One, uh, just you know, just slogging it out month after month, year after year. Um, but but that doesn't mean of uh, uh, coming out of it um, and looking for a solution. Uh, this is perhaps this is the way she would look at it. We would all want a solution, but first and foremost, not at the expense of Ukraine. Yes. Uh, and so I think that th that would be my main point. I mean, there is, and there is still a good deal of of support for Ukraine and its and its resistance to the Russian invasion among its friends in Europe and and in the United States. But of course, we're seeing in, in Ukraine now something of a war. Of attrition. If we look at the the battle for Avdivka at the moment, that looks like something of a siege, and we're seeing well on either side, it's about whose resources, munitions, and personnel are, are being exhausted more. Yes, um, um, we thought Bakhmut was bad, but uh, Avdika, as far as the commitment of of uh, major heavily armored forces, especially by the uh, Russians, um, a determined Ukrainian defense. It is a traditional charnel house. But by the same token, again, the Ukrainians have given uh, certainly more than they've received. Yes. And everything we read about the Russians is they've suffered terrible losses. They've had to dip into their um, older armor reserves, but they keep coming and they keep pressing uh, along that uh, right, you know, in, in the game to get Donetsk. Um, and then they keep pushing uh, a little less aggressively down uh, down from the uh, Kharkiv axis uh, towards Kupiansk. Mm. No, this is, uh, we're in an awful slog now. The ground does not support big, big uh, major armor pushes, though the Russians have been moving on that axis, but they've been doing it already for several months. No, this is a, this is a grim slog it out. What is different, perhaps, is that the Russian war industry has, has gotten somewhat of its foot back, feet underneath it. Um, and, um, and this is a heavily artillery war, ammunition war, uh, the Russians seem to be um, um, to be working uh, on that, as we are doing all we can to support the Ukrainians. It comes down again to will to fight, as long as the resources are there. And this is what the big debate in the United States about is: aid for Ukraine, aid for Israel. Do you do you, do you put it together, which I, I support in this instant, so as not to forsake Ukraine? But this is uh, this is a ugly attritional great war to, and there's nothing great about the great war um um just slog that we're all yes. witnessing a really really good summary of the situation thank you uh, brigadier general peter zwack who's a former u.s senior defense official